Looking at what people cook on YouTube, pasta carbonara is one of the all-time favorites. It's also mine, but I've learned it's tricky. Number of times I made it runny or turned it into scrambled eggs could be counted in millions or maybe dozens. So I researched as much as I could about the chemistry and physics of eggs, and this video is about that. The key trick is that once most ingredients are fried, you cool down the frying pan, add eggs and cheese, and cook very, very slowly to about 75 degrees Celsius. If you do it slowly enough, while continuously stirring, you pretty much can't go wrong. Now, let's explain why. Carbonara has a lot of fat from cheese and bacon, as well as some water from cooked pasta. Water and fat don't mix particularly well, so we add eggs that have lecithin, which helps emulsify it all into one creamy sauce. Without eggs, we'd have a molten cheese floating on top of water, looking kind of gross. But eggs are tricky. Apart from lecithin, they contain 20 other types of protein, which cook at different temperatures, anywhere from 50 to about 80 degrees. And cooking proteins is complex. In a cold liquid, protein molecules float freely, bouncing into one another. When you start heating them up slowly, they start moving faster and faster, eventually denaturing and thickening the sauce. But if you heat too quickly, the convection won't happen fast enough and the proteins that are at the bottom of the pan will denature and turn sauce into a solid. This is how we make scrambled eggs, or if we never stir, an omelette. Why does this happen? Well, my animation kind of lied. While raw proteins look a little bit like springs, the heated, denatured proteins look completely differently, and the shape of the molecule dictates, to some extent, how it interacts with other molecules. You know, springs bounce and strings turn into a mess. Okay, even this animation light a little. Understanding shapes of proteins and their reactions is a branch of biology, chemistry and medicine, and big money is paid to researching these topics. Because understanding it helps develop drugs which kill bacteria and viruses, including the now infamous coronavirus. Take a look at this 3D model, which shows you a recently modeled protein of SARS-CoV-2, the virus that causes the COVID-19 disease outbreak. As you can see, it's much more complex than my animation, but it has these distinctly, distinctly springy parts. Anyway, back to food. Recipe time. We start by rendering fat and adding a little bit of garlic, or other things, if you're not making carbonara, but something carbonara inspired. I'm not judging, go wild. Then we cool it all down quite a bit. Add a splash of cold water and freshly grated cheese, which will immediately melt, but also cool down the frying pan. I give eggs a quick blend in a small blender, just to break the membrane that separates yolks from whites. Some people say that you should never do carbonara with whites, but since egg whites are mostly water anyway, I'm, I don't buy this. At this point, we can start heating at very, very low temperature. It's much easier to cook on a very low heat on electric stoves than on gas or coal. Also, electric stoves don't have hotspots. And if powered with renewable energy, they don't contribute to the climate change. I also add one last bunch of cheese. Most cheeses melt at around 60 degrees, so when the cheese starts to melt, you know you're halfway there. Keep going a little longer, measuring the temperature with a thermometer, or if you have a thermal camera, that works too. 72 degrees is what is typically considered a safe temperature for eggs. Some countries say it's 75, that's where I stop. Maybe going a little higher if still not thick enough. And there you have it, a delicious, creamy, not scrambled, not watery carbonara. Just keep stirring and turn the heat down. I hope you enjoyed this video. If so, subscribe to see more and keep me motivated. Like it, share it with all of your friends and I'll be back soon.